Hello guys, alright, this is the first open map of Project Destiny. Creating it is the most complicated part, but also the most fun. And in this episode I want to focus on the creation of it. Between game design, art design and gameplay implementation and see the challenges related on its development. Let's start with the first steps related to game design to understand how the game should work in relation to exploration. To make exploration satisfying, I have studied the rewards for the most important places, mainly relating to the growth of the character in terms of storytelling. To balance the difficulty, I have added obstacles, dangers and micromanagement elements, which will affect the energy of the main character. I really like titles like Death Stranding and SnowRunner, where every meter of movement is an important experience, so I take inspiration from them. Since every action the character performs will consume his energy, such as jumping, walking in the water, running, it is necessary to recover energy by assimilating luminous globes, positioned by hand to encourage exploration in the most interesting places on the map. It's an experience that focuses also on an emotional side. I have to make the journey that each player will face as immersive as possible. This is why I want to hide on-screen indicators like these fantastic bars as soon as possible. I really appreciate when these indicators are integrated in an original way, as in the case of Journey or Dead Space. Even the smallest details are essential for greater immersion. Another concept of this project is freedom of movement. Do you see a rock? Is it tall enough to jump over? Alright, the stone is interactable, and therefore you can mantle on it. The wall in front of you is too high, and it has no handles to climb on. You have to find an alternative way. I want to create a credible and pleasant world to travel through thanks to a level design handcrafted to achieve my personal goal. An element that I find very important for freedom of movement is climbing. I have positioned various points where it is possible to climb, but none of them are mandatory. In recent modern games, it seems that this action should be as automatic as possible, as in Uncharted or in the new God of War saga but I personally prefer where climbing is more complex and compelling, as in Shadow of the Colossus. Precisely, this last game where climbing was an important part of the gameplay was a very important reference for the project I'm working on. Having created a large map will be useless without a character capable of moving within it, which is why I had to study a series of mechanics ideal to my abilities and needs. A game that impressed me a lot in my childhood, so long time ago, it was Jack and Dexter, that freedom, that graphic quality, that fantastic gameplay. I loved it. I want to be able to run, walk, hold on anything I want, climbing, I want to explore a pristine and wild land. This is why I need to know what I want to do in my dream game, to define the gameplay. Let's take walking for example. It seems a useless gameplay mechanic, but with the right implementation can become an interesting part of the gameplay. Dodging objects safely, increasing the chance of balance on high path, or moving carefully in dangerous places. Or running, a simple task, right? No, a higher speed means that travel is more comfortable, and if it's always available, the player will use it most of the time, making running the primary method of travel. Instead, I want running to be a gameplay element that has meaning in the gameplay loop, an addition that can be used in a limited way and not an always used action, limited by the energy of the character. This implies more strategy, more attention and a bit of gameplay complexity for this mechanic. It is important to balance the gaming possibilities based on the game genre and the type of experience I want to offer. Implementing climbing, in addition to being difficult to develop, it is also difficult to make it fun and fulfilling. 
I wanted to include the climbing section to quickly reach places that would otherwise be difficult to reach. But if I make the action too automatic and passive, it risks being uninteresting. Add a stamina bar and a limited climbing time makes everything more exciting and interesting. There will be various holes on which the player can rest. It will be up to him to choose the most ideal places to recover his stamina. Giving the player as many options as possible to move is my priority. Climbing offers an additional variation to my indie game gameplay. Another common action is jumping. How to make it interesting and satisfying? It's a very simple input that can be done in a lot of games. Since the jump is the movement that we will repeat the most in the game, it is essential to take care of it and develop it very carefully. Even a real engine has a jump already set by default, but it's not that interesting. I added a double jump that seems easy, but even the simplest things hides many difficulties. I take care of the action that the player will do most often to the best of my ability. Having the basics of the gameplay in mind, I can search for assets on Marketplace that are as close as possible to what I need. Having a solid base from which to customize the gameplay is essential without having technical programming knowledge. I wanted to make traveling and discovering new unexplored places the main part of my project, so I created a large open map that the player can freely explore. To be able to have functioning and satisfying gameplay, it is important to have a clear idea of the experience I want to propose. In the last part of this episode, I will present the main challenges and solutions related to the graphic aspect. So, how to create convincing environments and how to be inspired by the best. This is the first 3D video game I've created. I don't have much experience in this job even though I have great passion. To help me in the creation process, I have always tried to take inspiration from the best, trying to recreate certain environments, taking into account the colors, shapes and emotion that a work of art can convey to me. Thanks to these guidelines, I try to recreate these landscapes with my personal style, drawing inspiration from the masterpieces of the genre. Since the map will be wild and lush, I wanted to invest a lot of time in finding the right technique to create bushes and vegetation. How did I do it? Billboards. Each bush starts from a shape like this, where each polygon generates an alpha image that I can modify in shape and colors to have this distinctive style, inspired by Studio Ghibli. Recreating trees, also it was a very complex undertaking. But after various research and tests of various kinds, I can say that I am satisfied with the work performed. How did I do it? As for the bushes, the procedure is very similar. It changes the shape of the tree. I will publish a specific video shortly, where I will explain this technique in detail. Let's talk about rocks. They should be easy to make, right? Not so much. This wasn't the case for me. It took me a lot of study and research to find the most comfortable method with a good quality time compromise. That's my workflow. Download assets, texture creation in Blender, add details in Substance Painter, done. Arguably style rock. Water, rivers, lakes. By spending a small amount on the marketplace, you can use this tool which allows you to have fantastic rivers with stylized graphics with just a few clicks. Just insert the spline into the game world and done. By modifying the various settings, is it possible to customize the water course in detail? There is nothing wrong with relying on some external tools to complete the game of your dreams. The important thing is to maintain a precise, unique and cohesive stylistic identity. When we have finally prepared all the necessary assets, the time has come to assemble everything in the map a job that is not obvious. To increase the quality of each setting, I take maximum care of each element. In this shot, I have variation of the color of the grass, various heights of the grass, rocks surrounded by bushes and vegetations, more diverse grass, trunks, spines, the lights that filter through the branches. 
the movement of vegetation. Each element is studied and added with an in-depth stylistic research to arrive at the highest possible quality of composition. So, these are the main challenges regarding the creation of the first map of the game. What do you think? Do you have questions relating to any particular aspect? Let me know. In the last few months, I have finally started developing the character of the game. I can't wait to show it to you in the next devlog. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to support me and follow the development of Project Destiny. See you soon!